As a kid, I remember my dad would wake up early and put his cowboy boots on and his jeans on <laughs> and um, he'd go to work before it was even light outside. And I grew up like coming and playing with the calves, but once I actually started working here, I got to see firsthand how the operation works and I loved it and I hope that I can run the farm one day. Bar 20 Dairy Farms is a, is a dairy farm that has about 7,000 milking cows. We've been in business since the 1950s. My grandfather started uh, the dairy business. And his whole life he was always working and working and trying to learn and trying to do better. A lot of the dairies in the 50s are no longer here, but we've survived. Today it's how can we do more with less? How can we be more efficient? How can we use less water? How can we use less power? And on the dairy, everything we do is dependent. We use approximately 8 million kilowatt hours a year. My biggest energy fear is that there's a shortage of energy. You know, we probably spend around $2 million a year on power before we invested into the renewable energies. You know, And that's one of the reasons why we decided to uh, produce renewable energy to help us get through these difficult times. The digester is new technology that we're excited for because it does two things. It produces clean, renewable energy and it reduces methane emissions that would otherwise be going into the atmosphere. I grew up in the Central Valley and we're known for having terrible air quality. And so anything we can do to improve that air quality for everyone just breathing the air, that's something that I think we should be doing. It's different times. The challenges in California with drought and climate change, air quality, those are all things that are a part of it. It's not just about the cows, it's about your environment. Hi, Steve. Nice to see you. How are you? Welcome. Welcome. How are things? Good to see you. Doing great. Doing great. In California, whenever there is a wildfire, you lose power. If there is a hurricane, or if there's torrential rainfall, you lose power. So power cannot be taken for granted. That's why it's increasingly getting even more important to deploy newer technologies that can produce electricity more reliably on-site using fuel sources that are available on-site. Bloom Energy fuel cells are flex fuel, which means they can run on different kinds of gases, such as natural gas, biogas, and hydrogen. As long as a customer has one of these fuels, they can deploy our fuel cells and produce electricity to power their needs and generate electricity on-site. The biogas process starts out with the cows. When the cows eat, they produce milk and they produce waste, urine and manure. And so that wastewater is captured by the digester. And what happens is as the gas rises, it's captured by the cover. And from there, it goes into a pipe and it's piped over to where the gas needs to be cleaned up. The key is what do you do with that biogas? Converting it into electricity at a very high efficiency and without any combustion is new. And that's what Bloom Energy fuel cells do. This is a fuel cell. Ambient air passes over one side of the fuel cell, while fuel, in this case biogas from the cow manure, passes over the other side. Oxygen ions combine with the reformed fuel, and the electrochemical reaction that occurs produces electricity without combustion. Almost 2,000 fuel cells are stacked on top of each other per module, making the system incredibly compact and dense. If you take all the dairies that produce biogas, such as this in California, and combine it with all the landfills and wastewater plants, the total biogas potential from these three sources is enough to power over a million households. The amount of electricity produced here at this farm, it would take 40 acres of solar to produce that same amount. The fuel cells run 24-7, 365, rain or shine, whereas solar works when the sun's out and uh, we still need a lot of power at night. So this solution helps offset the time when the sun's not out or it's raining or cloudy. It, it's, it's very empowering, it's very encouraging. I love to see the innovation that's happening because, okay, it's 2023 now. I can't even imagine what we're gonna be doing 10 years from now because 10 years ago, I never would have thought they'd be making a fuel cell and using cow manure to power it. Projects like this establish a framework for any village, community, 
town, a city all across the world that can assimilate its waste and on a personal level, achieving universal energy access, which I believe is a basic human right, is what's most exciting about working on projects like this and many more to come in the future. I ha I've told you that I'm, pr I'm pretty proud of you. <laughs> I don't know if I've told you um, how proud I am of you though, and you really inspire me to do what I want to do in the future and to always do my best. Well, thank you, that's very nice. I kind of felt that way about my dad and what he did. It wasn't what he said, but it was what he did with mm -hmm. his actions and same with, with, with Grandpa Larry, you know. If we can make renewable clean power that's available 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, it seems mm -hmm. like a no-brainer. These are exciting times. Yeah. There's a lot of challenges, but with challenge come opportunity, right? Opportunities for growth and, and improve.